Is, but we will start our most intriguing countdown. Number 25. Number 25, Brock, is the linebacker. He's not a starter. Tyrese Knight. Mm-hmm. Two new starting linebackers, and they'll be uh, appearing later in this countdown, I promise. But Tyrese Knight jumped out to me, certainly at uh, all of the mini camps that I saw, because he's quick, because he looks different than some of the guys we've seen the last few years, and because the two presumed starters weren't there practicing. So we got a lot more eyes on Tyrese Knight. He's not John Radigan, who is sort of a guy who's going to be here and kind of you know, play out the string and special mostly teamer. be a special mm-hmm. teamer who can fill in. He's got the capability to be a legitimate starter in this league because of that one weapon, which is his speed. Play that. UTEP. Biggest challenge for him is going to be this playbook. I was listening to our buddy Mark Schlereth, and uh, when we get to Ryan Grubb, eventually, I don't know if he's on this list or not, but when we eventually get there, I'm going to remember this anecdote as I listened to Schler. Schler sat, sat down with the coordinator of the Colorado Buffaloes, longtime NFL coordinator, and kind of asked him about, hey, man, difference between the college and pro game, right? So this guy's downshifting from the NFL game mm-hmm. to the college game. And he said, oof, about 50% of the playbook. Yeah, college kids can handle about 50% of the volume, A, because of the hours and the time and everything else. And just, you know, you have more bodies, 90, 100 guys in college. You can run through them and you want to put them in a position for success. So you streamline it to what they do best. And it's about half the playbook. This this young man coming into this Mike McDonald NFL playbook, this defensive scheme. can take him some time. <laughs> can take him a little time. And I think that's okay. Uh, that's why he's kind of deep on this countdown. He's the first name we're going to get to. I don't know that I expect him to jump into a starting role right away. But doesn't he have some upside because of that speed? And I, I, I think that's what, what jumped out to me watching him. And then just he, in some ways, to me, stands for some of the differences of what Mike McDonald is looking for in a post-Pete Carroll world. I don't know that he would have played linebacker for Pete Carroll. No, I don't think he would have. I don't think he would have been somebody that Pete would have wanted John to target in the draft. But you got a new coach. You got a new defensive system. And in some ways, Tyrese Knight maybe um, exemplifies that. In my moment of some rage and emotion, I did not hit sin on a lot of tweets. Herm Edwards did yesterday after the mayor's getting no, nice. Let, let it settle well, let down. It yeah. eh, nothing good can come out of this. One of those tweets was comparing the Mariners hitting with runners in scoring position. Situational hitting, as Divish talked about, with the Seahawks run defense. <laughs> that are very similar. Yeah. Or you know what? The Bad Seahawks every def- year. Or the Seahawks defense, Salk covering the middle of the field for goodness sakes for gracious sakes for screaming sakes how many times are guys wide open in the middle of the field all the time can all he, the time can he help with that yeah and this defense will all three of these linebackers and i know you're going to profile the other two maybe as a tandem but their ability to cover the actual middle of the field that everybody targeted against these seahawks year after year after year it should look different. Is he going to make every play? Absolutely not. Is he going to be perfect? Absolutely not. Are these linebackers going to be better than, you know, Bobby and all pro and Hall of Famer in some ways? Absolutely not. But the ability to be sticky mm. and run and cover space and take away actually what the offense is trying to do should be to our eyes significantly better. How often do you think we will see Tyrese Knight this year? I think best case scenario, he starts zero games. Right. Best case scenario, these two, Dotson on a one-year deal, Baker the tackle maker on a one-year deal, are 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 awesome and yeah. splendid. And we haven't else? seen any, either of those guys play yet. No, so we let me not. ask you a second time: How much do you think we'll see Tyrese Knight this year? I think we'll, yeah, you'll see him. Both are especially Dotson's an undersized guy who played last year when an undersized guy in Buffalo got hurt mm-hmm. and played great for like ten or eleven games. Previous three years, special teamer, backup linebacker, spot you know spot player. So he's going to be thrust into a role that he has never played for an entire season. And so, yeah, Tyrese Knight better be ready to play. You're going to have to equip him through training camp. And and who knows, maybe rotate a series in here or there to, to get him some run because he will – yeah, he will start some. I'm pretty confident to say he will start some Will games. he be a playmaker? Somebody who you're like, oh, that guy, that guy just made a play. Hit in the backfield, an interception, yeah. a tip ball, change the game. Is he that kind of guy? And 
I mean, to to try to project that is to like to try to project some of these things. Is Willie Castro <laughs> right. going to have an OPS of almost 800 after three years of six under 650? I don't. Will he run, Salk? Will this defense run? Will the middle of the field be not as void and actually have people in it and around it running? That I'm pretty confident in saying. Okay. That is uh, the first edition of our 25 Most Intriguing Seahawks Countdown for 2024.